The President, please be seated. Le Président, Mesdames et Messieurs, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now in session. Et nous reprenons l'audience. We would like to once again give the floor to Judge Lavergne, Le juge who Lavergne aura would wish to put questionings to the expert, and he already expert. attempted to put uh, some questions before the adjournment, and uh, so if he would Il wish to continue some further questions, the floor is yours. Je vous avais la parole, juge Lavergne. Monsieur l'expert, ce matin, vous avez évoqué, pour employer un mot neutre, un certain nombre d'incidents qui se sont produits entre le Vietnam et le Cambodge en 1975-1976 et également au début de l'année 1977. Parmi ces incidents, vous avez fait état d'un incident concernant un navire, je crois qu'il s'appelait le Mayaguez. Vous avez également fait état d'incidents concernant des îles situé dans le golfe de Thaïlande. Est-ce que vous pourriez nous donner plus, si vous le pouvez, plus de précision concernant l'importance de ces incidents Est-ce que vous avez, par exemple, une idée s'il y a eu des morts, s'il y a eu des blessés, s'il si, euh, a été fait usage d'un matériel militaire particulier, s'il y avait des troupes importantes Qu'est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire à ce sujet As, as I said, <coughs> as I said before, um, Comme je dit that um, the, my memory of that period is que de cette rather um, vague at this point, but uh, looking at the book what I wrote at the time, mais en reprenant I le livre que j'avais écrit à l'époque, um, le souvenir attacks, mm, me vient que certaines attaques Rouge, étaient réalisées les Khmer Rouges, pas par le biais du véritable marine, mais ils avaient quelques navires de patrouille et quelques personnes armées islands, héritées du régime antérieur et qui leur permettaient d'aller patrouiller les îles. They were finally expelled by the Vietnamese. Les Vietnamiens um, ont expulsé, Vietnamese found les, les um, remains, human remains, suggesting uh, people who were killed, who were found euh, in those islands. Cela indiquait que c'est, enfin, on a um, pu voir que c'était les cadavres de personnes qui avaient été tuées. <coughs> My memory serves right. It was si, something like 80 um, remains were found, but I may be wrong. It was a long time ago. Um, that's all that I can recollect at this point. Uh, Thank you. Um, Merci, Monsieur l'expert. Je n'ai pas d'autres questions pour l'instant. Thank you, sir. I have nothing further. The president, Le président. Before the floor is given to the prosecutors, la parole sera donnée au coprocureur. The chamber Mais would like uh, to raise an issue concerning the accused. 
The trial chamber would like to read the paragraph 88 of the agreement on fact by the parties concerning the armed conflict. Immediately after the 17th of April 1975, the international armed conflict between Cambodia and Vietnam erupted and lasted at least to the 6th of January 1979. Paragraph 6 of the closing order. There is no description concerning this. Deutsch did not dispute uh, this uh, armed conflict. Uh, Later on, he did not uh, maintain any position and uh, and the defense would like uh, to leave it to the trial chamber to make a decision on this matter. So the question to the accused is that uh, the term did not diffuse uh, the existence of the armed conflict due to the fact that uh, you are not aware of the fact or because uh, you would like to exercise your right uh, to remain silent. The accused, Mr. President. The clashes between the Les Communist Party of Cambodia and the Vietnamese Communist Party, I heard it, but not in details. I would like to détail. clarify that first. Je dois préciser cela d'emblée. My knowledge of the event up to Ma March 75, mars I'm sorry, until March 1976, mars 76, I believe Le Jun still maintained his policies on the Chinese Federation, that he's the fighter of the Indo-Chinese Federation, and for Pol Pot, he did not want the Indo-Chinese Federation in Cambodia, and as, as a member of the Communist Party of Cambodia, I believed that the struggles to defend their country. Pol Pot is a clever person. So the armed classes, as I reported during the investigation stage, were known only in two parts. One is at the place on Tuch area. It is to the south of Mundulkiri province, and another disputed location is at Ling Brivier. So that's the true classes that I have known. This is my knowledge, and this doesn't mean I would like to maintain my rights to remain silent, because I had my trust in Pol Pot that he would lead the country and to preserve the sovereignty and integrity of the country. Mr. President, do any judges have any questions regarding uh, this matter to be put before the accused? Pose, Next, I would, would like to give the floor to the co-prosecutors co-procureur to put forward questions to the expert witness Nayan Chanda regarding Chanda. the armed conflict. Pour ce qui est du conflict if you have questions, armé. please, the floor is si yours. Vous avez des questions, vous avez la parole. Co-prosecutor. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. Chanda. My name is Seng Bun Kiel, representing the prosecution, and I have the following questions for you. Were you aware of the Khmer Rouge dispute with the Lodnall soldiers, and if you were aware of it. When did it happen? 
Si vous en avez connaissance ou conscience, savez-vous où et quand cela s'est produit If I understood, you said si j'ai correctement compris dispute with Lannol soldiers. Querelle entre um, I thought the Khmer Rouge were fighting Lannol, so there bah, cannot be any dispute. There was an armed conflict Khmer between the Khmer Rouge and the Lannol. Donc, ce n'était pas une querelle. Ils étaient, euh, c'était des forces antagonistes et ils étaient en lutte. Ça, ça me paraît tout à fait évident. Prosecutor. Co-procureur. Can you recall in your book? Pouvez-vous vous souvenir de ce que vous I do not have the English version, but I have the Khmer version. At page 287, it reads. In 1977, the Central Force of the Central Zone went to make an arrest sont allés procéder à une arrestation de soldats dans la zone est, zone y compris Capoc, qui a lancé la force pour l'arrêt. Qui dirigeait cette do you recall cette that? troupe-là euh, en vue de son arrestation. Yes, I do. Est-ce que vous vous souvenez de cela Oui, je m'en souviens, dit le témoin. Prosecuteur, do you know if any vous, est-ce que vous armed conflict si il y a eu exist at the time? S'il y avait conflit armé à l'époque, there were, has been armed conflict il y avait Vietnam, un conflit armé avec le Vietnam en fait pendant toute la période and this, uh, de 1977. Le procureur, je veux préciser le force led by Kai Pok si la force menée par Kai Pok the forced of the soldiers at the Les east zone, which was led by Sao Pum. Um, my information on those episodes actually come from Cambodia experts who studied different Khmer Rouge documents. And from what I recall, there was combat, but uh, Sao Pum himself um, committed suicide when he realized that the central forces were approaching his, uh, where he was uh, taking shelter. Prosecutor, in your book, it states that when the force of Kaipok went to around the central office of the East Zone, Sao Pum at the time ordered his force to fight against Kai Pok's force. Was that the fact? Again, as I have no first-hand knowledge, uh, this is learned from analysis done by Cambodian scholars based on their reading of Cambodian documents. So I can only say that I believe those scholars who maintain that there was fight. Co-procureur. You have already informed the honors that when the Khmer Rouge immediately came into power, they demanded certain islands, especially the Troll and Krochotses Islands. I would like to know when the Khmer Rouge took control of the islands when they went to attack at those islands, where the people or properties were destroyed or damaged? Again, my memory is not very sharp on that, but I recall that there was considerable damage to property and also killing of people during the attack. Et qu'il y a eu pas mal de personnes qui ont été tuées pendant l'attaque. Prosecutor. So, after the attack on the islands, 
Did the Vietnamese and Cambodian leaders carry out any negotiation? I think uh, there was negotiation. And, uh, as a result of those negotiations, the Vietnamese uh, returned Ko Wei Island, which they captured in their push to expel the Khmer Rouge from those islands. They had captured Ko Lo Wei, which was a Cambodian island, and which they returned later on as a result of the negotiation. Au Cambodge, à la suite de ces Look, prosecutor. Do you know why the Vietnamese withdrew from the Polo Wai Island? Se sont retirés de l'île Polo Wai. Because I think Le it témoin. has been uh, under Car Cambodian control all along. I don't think it was ever in dispute Je ne pense pas as to the ownership of that island. So. Vietnamese basically respected du fait que cette île the sovereignty of Cambodia over Kowe before and, le, 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 and la then this, they returned this as a result of their policy. Prosecutor. After the attack by Vietnamese on Après the Polo Wai Island, What was the reaction or revenge Quelle by the Vietnamese government at the times toward Vietnamese? Du gouvernement vietnamien. Um, I am not sure I understand the Je question whether question. Vietnamese revenge, revenge on whom? Une viet, une um, des I don't understand à the question. Qui? Je pas bien votre question. The prosecutor. Le did the Khmer Rouge, Khmer Rouge take any action toward the Vietnamese people who lived in Cambodia as a revenge toward the Vietnamese troops taking control of the Polo Wai Island? Contre la capture de um, par les I have no, no way of knowing what was um, what the Khmer Rouge did vis-à-vis -vis the Vietnamese Khmer residents of Cambodia, whether it was done as a matter of established policy not to have ethnic Vietnamese in Cambodia, or whether it was done in revenge. But my de de guess would be Cambodge, that Vietnamese were expelled even before Polo Wei was captured by the Vietnamese. So I, I doubt that there is any direct relationship between these two. The prosecutor. Regarding the privilege line, Pour ce qui est de la ligne did Brévier, the two countries recognize the privilege line? Avait-il reconnu la ligne Brévier? I think both countries did pays, recognize the Brévier line, bien, but the Brévier line la ligne Brévier, was not a line to demarcate sovereignty. Il ne s'agissait pas d'une ligne qui, was a line qui était une démarcation des frontières entre les pays stated souverains. That line C'était une ligne established police jurisdiction over these islands. Une juridiction and I think in 1939, there was no law of the sea to determine what would be the territorial waters par exemple, or les economic zone. All those concepts are more recent. And so the Brevia line qui sont plus is in some ways inadequate Et donc to cette resolve the dispute that came at that time. Pour ce qui était de résoudre le conflit de l'époque. The prosecutor. Le co-procureur. Previously, you talked about the conflicts at Koh Troll Island, which was called Phu Cok Island by the Vietnam, and the Koh Chok Sai Island, called Hu Chu Island by Vietnamese, and the Pulau Wai Island. Were there any islands in dispute? Koh Chok Sai, qui s'appelle Tho Chu. Uh, I think uh, Cambodia le, has le claimed um, Phu Quoc Island before, and if I recall, 
prétendus under, avaient uh, eu des prétentions the king, king de le Kuk, King of Cambodia under Prince Sihanouk, Fukok, récupération de Kotral Island from the South Vietnam uh, and that effort Vietnam didn't succeed. Sud, effort qui était resté sans effet. Prosecutor. Co procureur. Previously, there were discussions between Vietnam and eu, Cambodia regarding the friendship treaty and non-aggression policy. Were you aware of that? Politique de non-aggression. En aviez-vous eu connaissance? Friendship treaty between Kingdom of Cambodia and, and, Viet and Democratic Republic of Vietnam. Is that what you are asking? Democratic de Vietnam. C'est 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 de cela que vous parlez? That is correct. Oui, c'est bien cela. Yes, there was. Oui, effectivement, il y avait un tel traité. In fact, that was one of the reasons for the Khmer Rouge. Pour cette raison d'ailleurs, notamment. Opposition to the Vietnamese. Because Les Vietnam considered that in order to carry on their struggle to liberate South Vietnam, they had to have friendship and cooperation of the Kingdom of Cambodia. And that is why they maintained a good relationship with the uh, government. And that was something that Khmer Rouge disliked because they wanted to fight the royal government of Cambodia cela, and not to have voulait, uh, any compromise with them. Uh, and so they didn't like the Vietnamese position on that. Du Cambodge et donc se trouvait en porte à faux par, par rapport à la the position vietnamienne. So it means le the friendships, Ainsi donc, treaty and non-aggression were not respected by both sides. Is that correct? On fini, il, il a fini par ne pas uh, être respecté so. par les deux parties. Uh, oui, on peut effectivement dire cela, dit le témoin. The prosecutor. Co procureur. Let me go back to an appeal by the Phnom Penh radio broadcast, which was done on the 10th of Phnom May, May 1978, which appealed to kill the Vietnamese ethnicity at the time. Can you recall that? Yes, indeed. And earlier I mentioned that, and I like to correct the record. I said May 30th. It was actually May 10th broadcast, and that broadcast is perhaps the most virulent exposition of the Khmer Rouge policy toward Vietnam in the most racist term. And call to kill all 50 million Vietnamese. It was. Absurd, but it, effectivement it, sh le it showed the state of Khmer Rouge mind at the time. Uh, lancé les Khmer Rouge. En tout cas, cette virulence illustre bien l'état d'esprit des Khmer à l'époque. Thank you. Another point Car that I would like to ask: de Do you can you recall Ruth Sarund? His name was mentioned in a letter in the which entitled "Instructions from the Office." 880. Do you recall that letter of uh, Rousseau? It was a directive. Yes, I think the letter was oui, from 870. Lettre, en fait, elle vient du bureau 870, and the pas letter, 880, I remember very well because Et that was one of the striking things I learned. Une des choses dont je me the bien letter parce that uh, Rousseau saw by accident. Vu par accident. Um, asked the committee to kill all Vietnamese and anybody who were friendly with the Vietnamese. So essentially, it was an order for a pogrom of Vietnamese people. Fin utile, un, un ordre de pogrom à des the prosecutor. And the letter was to purge the Vietnamese ethnicity. Were the Vietnamese uh, people arrested and be brought to any locations such as security offices? Um, I do not know the detail. The only detail I remember um, learning from Ross Sarun was that he knew 
one Khmer person who was married to a Vietnamese woman and he was sent out of the village on some pretext and when he came back he discovered his wife has been killed and buried uh, unceremoniously. The prosecutor in your book it also states that the arrest of the Vietnamese people and that they were sent to the state security offices. Is that true? Um, yeah, I do not recall exactly what I wrote at the time, but I am, I am sure if I had written that, uh, it was based on information that I got from reliable sources. The prosecutor? The co-procureur. Do you have answer to Judge uh, Cartwright that the attacks by the Vietnamese deep inside the Cambodian territories, about 15 miles? At that time, where was the attack uh, taken place in Swai Rieng? So, and besides Swai Rieng, were the attacks taken place elsewhere? I think the attack um, took place all along southwest, uh, in, uh, sorry, in, in Vietnam's uh, southwest border, and uh, but Swai Rieng was the area, I recall, where the Vietnamese forces uh, had gone in and stayed put for a, for a period. Question. When the Vietnamese troops uh, went to attack uh, inside Cambodia, were the Khmer Rouge uh, troops uh, uh, attacked or counter-attacked? Um, I think there, there are occasions when there was uh, a very stiff resistance fight, and there are other occasions when there was very little resistance, so it was not uniform everywhere. Question. Were there any casualty regarding the people and uh, the property uh, through your recollection? I think there was uh, considerable damage to property, but also I recall that um, in many occasions, especially since end of 77, early 78, when Vietnamese troops entered Cambodia, they often came back with many Cambodians who wanted to escape with the Vietnamese troops. The Vietnamese army trucks brought back many Cambodians who wanted to live in the safety of Vietnam. And I have visited some camps where I met such Khmers who have been living in Vietnam after being evacuated by the Vietnamese soldiers. Question. When there was such fighting, were the Vietnamese troops uh, arresting Khmer Rouge soldiers? Yes, I think they did capture quite a few Khmer Rouge soldiers, and they were brought back, and again I was told that they were simple farmers and not really any, uh, committed Khmer Rouge, and so they were being given re-education, as called, at all, that they were being given some political lectures and perhaps to turn them into a fighter for liberation of Cambodia later on. That was the purpose. Hi, John. Question. Do you still remember that uh, during the fightings, uh, Khmer Rouge soldiers were also arrested uh, by the Vietnamese troops? 
Yes, I think so. I, uh, this is what I said, oui, that the Cameroonian soldiers dit, were captured and brought uh, back to Vietnam in some of the camps Vietnam. the Vietnamese had uh, set up Notamment to receive the Khmer population coming to Vietnam, as well as a uh, specific area where those uh, captured Cameroonian soldiers were kept to be uh, re-educated. Uh, the question I think um, the interpreter may would like to correct also the prosecutor asked that whether the, uh, the Vietnamese troops were arrested by the Khmer, Khmer Rouge soldiers during that time. My apology. Um, I'm not aware of um, any Vietnamese being arrested. Uh, it is possible, but I, I do not have any detail on that. In another clash in 1977 by Division 9, supported by uh, the Arsenal unit of the Vietnamese, uh, invaded uh, a, on a massive scale into Cambodia, and a lot of Cambodians were wounded, and those people were transported to Phnom Penh Hospital. And uh, they needed uh, blood for saving the life of the wounded uh, soldiers. Were you aware of where those uh, blood were collected from? No, I'm afraid I have no idea about what you mentioned about uh, wounded being brought to Phnom Penh or given blood transfusion. I was unaware of that. According to your document, you stated that uh, there were efforts to take blood uh, from generous people and from uh, other people to help uh, the wounded uh, soldiers. Do you still recall that uh, the assertion is correct? Can you give me the page reference where de, uh, I, I don't recall that? Avez dit? Réponse. Est-ce que vous pouvez me donner le numéro de la page de manière à ce que je puisse um, voir exactement ce qui a été dit uh, dans ce livre? The prosecutor, I le only have uh, the ER numbers in Khmer, but I uh, think I may give the uh, reference page of the Khmer document, which is page 234, but I don't know the English uh, version Mais je ne as reference. Sais pas à quoi correspond cette page dans la version anglaise. In English, uh, the, uh, uh, the page is 206. 206. 206. Uh, ER no. number Yes, um, I see that. That was actually um, oui. that uh, information was taken from que les informations a book d'un livre written by écrit par Laurence Pic. Laurence Pic. Au-delà du ciel. Chacun chez les Khmer Rouge. 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 Chacun chez les
Il s'agit d'un récit d'une Française qui a vécu au Cambodge. And elle était la femme de la femme de la Khmer Rouge. Et elle a écrit cela dans son livre. Et c'est de ce livre que me proviennent ces, que me proviennent ces informations. Question. Question. Have you ever heard uh, the strategy, what we call the? Avez-vous déjà entendu parler de la stratégie à laquelle on fait référence? Lightning attack, le terme, a strike, l'attaque éclair, the lightning la frappe victory éclair. Of success. Are you familiar with those terms? Est-ce que vous avez connaissance de ces termes? Yes, I have heard that. La réponse, oui. Slogan. En effet, il s'agit d'un slogan. Question. Do you still recall that these strategies were meant uh, for and uh, uh, who était le but actually de cette implemented uh, qui these strategies? Était responsable de sa mise en œuvre. Um, I do not moins. recall the exact context of those rappelle pas du that uh, slogan, exact. but um, clearly the Khmer Rouge attacks that happened along Vietnam's border, there were lightning attacks, uh, surprise attacks, le de la et bien, and, uh, and they did succeed in killing éclair. a lot of people, so et if uh, killing uh, civilians is a mark of success, it was a very successful la, lightning uh, attack. Um, l'élimination d'un nombre important de personnes. Donc, effectivement, si on peut mesurer en cela la réussite, eh bien, il s'agissait d'attaques éclair. Do you recall that, uh, Question. Vous rappelez-vous que les conflits between Vietnam et Cambodia et comment le Vietnam et le Cambodge place? Ce conflit avait lieu à quelle fréquence Conflict between Cambodia and Vietnam. Um, the period we are considering, from 75 to 79, it has been taking place uh, off and on, and with increasing frequency since 76, and, and rising in crescendo until the final Vietnamese attack in December 78. Euh, um, à partir de 1976, so une accélération, mais sinon, il s'agissait d'un conflit uh, qui a été... La contre-attaque a eu lieu à partir de 1977, mais jusqu'en décembre 1977, ce conflit est resté caché l'œil public. Euh, on ne parlait pas de ce uh, conflit. Question. Question. There is a statement that uh, the fighting between Vietnam and uh, Cambodia intensified uh, gradually. Uh, what do you think about this? Whether the statement is accurate? Quel commentaire pouvez-vous nous proposer à ce sujet? Yes, I do believe that. Je pense, they intensified en effet, um, que ce certainly from 1977 to 1977. Dialogue. Question. Question. Do you know about uh, the strategies of the Vietnamese de that uh, led to Vietnamiens the complete victory over the Khmer Rouge troops. And uh, what were the strategies behind uh, uh, used by the Vietnamese that they could really uh, have a major victory over the Khmer Rouge? Can you tell us anything about it? The Vietnamese, sujet, um, réponse, les Vietnamiens, strategy, looking back at how the operation went off, recul, was designed to passé, um, use maximum force, viser armored tirer parti carrier tank, maximale, and que ce soit air support une, la force aérienne, to les blindés, la force terrestre. Destroy the Khmer Rouge defenses and capture Phnom Penh. And then, uh, from Phnom Penh, fan out uh, to the provinces 
poursuivre jusqu'aux provinces, jusqu'aux îles. Et je pense que c'était appelé la Blooming Lotus Strategy. Mais ça ne pas été ce que les Vietnamiens appelaient la stratégie. Je ne sais pas comment. By Vietnamese General Wang Tien Zong. In 1975, the strategists, the Vietnamians, the generals Vietnamians, at the time of the first attack, given the fact that the first attack went to Phnom Penh and then spread out, it might look like a blooming lotus strategy. Étendu, on peut qualifier cette attaque de stratégie de. Pétale à partir de Tian Tan. Question. Vous venez de d'aborder l'épisode du Mayakas, navire américain qui avait été capturé par les Khmer Rouges. Lorsque les Khmer Rouges ont pris le contrôle du bateau. What was the position of the U.S. regarding this seizure? S'agissant de la prise de ce bateau. I think the United States sent in its jet fighters and they actually used a lot of bombing to show the Khmer Rouge that that was. A mistake. So I think I described that it was in my book, and it was based on the accounts I have read because I was not there, not there, witness the attack or American counterattack. But there is a book on the seizure of Mayakas, and a livre portant spécifiquement sur la prise du Mayakas. Et cela a constitué ma source principale pour le récit. Question. Do you still recall which was the base used by the U.S. to attack or counterattack the Khmer Rouge troops? The base militaire qui était utilisée par les États-Unis pour procéder à des attaques. No, I do not recall, but I. Non, je ne me rappelle pas de quelle base il s'agissait. Mais je me rappelle que les États-Unis disposaient de bases militaires en Thaïlande et ils auraient pu aisément utiliser ces bases. Mais je ne me rappelle pas si c'était le cas en l'espèce. Question. Regarding Thailand. S'agissant de Thaïlande. Do you know that there were also Conflicts between the Vietnamese, excuse me, the Khmer Rouge troops and the Thai soldiers. Troupes Khmer et les soldats thaïlandais. Réponse. Yes, indeed, there were. Oui, effectivement. Clashes along the Thai-Vietnam-Cambodia border. There was also an acquisition by the Khmer Rouge about. Thai airplane bombing inside Cambodia. There was a rumor that there were Thai airplanes flying over Cambodia. But there were definitely clashes along Thai Cambodian border. But there were definitely clashes along Thai Cambodian border. But there were definitely clashes along Thai Cambodian border. But there were definitely clashes along Thai Cambodian border. Question. Question. Do you do you know also that the conflicts at the border between Thailand and Cambodia happened more frequently or else? Connaissez une montée en puissance? No, I don't think it was more frequent than Vietnam. And in fact, since 1978, since 1978. Since the visit of Vice Premier Deng Xiaoping from China to Thailand and Southeast Asia, there was a definite cooling down of tension between Thailand and Cambodia. Because then the focus was on Vietnam and Cambodia. The centre de l'attention était principalement entre le Cambodge et le Vietnam. Question. Earlier, you said the 
um, the conflicts between Cambodia and Vietnam were informed to the international community. Do I understand you correctly? A fait l'objet d'une Vietnam-Cambodia conflict until December 31st, 1977 was not known in any detail. Uh, there were unconfirmed reports and speculation in the press based on hints offered by these governments, but uh, full knowledge of the extent of the conflict or casualties came to be known only when Kamerouge um, declared public um, that they are suspending relations with Vietnam. Suspendaient les relations diplomatiques avec le Vietnam. Well, uh, question. Question. According to your statement Selon earlier, you said uh, you met uh, with several leaders, especially the leaders of the uh, Khmer Rouge and the Vietnamese uh, senior people. Vietnamien, les hauts responsables. Vous avez eu l'occasion Can you tell us? Uh, whether in such meeting they discussed uh, the conflicts between si Cambodia and Vietnam? Vous avez um, yes. abordé la question um, du conflit entre le Cambodge et le Vietnam. With, Réponse. Um, with, uh, oui. Mr. Yang Sari, in 1979, I had interview with him. And, uh, and he basically said what uh, m'a dit? has been now said many times about Vietnamese are being aggressive um, country and, and Cambodia was trying to defend itself uh, from Vietnam. And, um, so I think the, the um, in conversations with Yensari there was no question that there was a conflict going on. And, um, and uh, I had interviewed with uh, Prime Minister Pham Man Dong in December 1977. At that stage, Et the à ce -là, conflict between Vietnam and Cambodia Vietnam et le still was not public because that was in mid-December, my interview with Prime Minister Pham Man Dong and the announcement from Phnom Penh came a few days later, but uh, I asked uh, from, from Nandong about uh, conflict with Cambodia, and he was very cautious. He admitted there was some problem, and, and it could be resolved, but he was uh, not willing to give any details about the kind of conflict uh, that had offered. Prosecutor. procureur. As you have met the leaders of the two countries, Puisque how did you assess the objectives, objectives of the two leaders, whether they have the willingness to resolve the countries between uh, amongst themselves? Suite à ces rencontres, est-ce qu'il y avait une volonté à arriver à une solution vis-à-vis de ce conflit? I think the, the interviews are more for getting a little bit of nuance or some nugget of information, but uh, I don't think uh, whether someone is genuinely interested to have a negotiated settlement, I don't think uh, it can be revealed in interview with a journalist. Uh, what I do know is that the depth of feeling on the part of the Khmer Rouge was such that uh, it was extremely difficult. Il était and basically, they had no trust in the Vietnamese. And the Vietnamese uh, Vietnam Vietnam were hopeful that some elements in the Khmer Rouge movement would be Khmer Rouge more reasonable. Those who had had previous cooperation with the Vietnamese party 
they were more understanding of the necessity of working together. And so I suspect, nobody has said this to me, but I suspect the Vietnamese uh, were being cautious in responding to the Khmer Rouge uh, uh, provocations in the hope that some elements, moderate or reasonable elements within the Khmer Rouge movement would eventually march and make it unnecessary for the Vietnamese to go into an open conflict with Cambodia. So that, I think, was the their expectation or hope. But um, le that didn't happen. Donc, je pense que c'est c'est mon sentiment ici vis-à-vis -vis de cette question. The prosecutor, thank you. Le procureur, je vous remercie. Now I have no further questions. Je n'ai pas d'autres questions à vous poser. And I would like my international colleagues to continue questioning if he has any questions to ask you. International. The president, the le international co-prosecutor, the floor is yours. Monsieur le co-procureur international, je vous donne la parole. Thank you, Mr. President. Good afternoon, Mr. Chanda. My name is Alex Bates. Um, together with uh, Mr. Seng Bung King, Alex I represent the co-prosecutors. And I have a few questions for you. Uh, you've informed us that uh, your memory is, perhaps not surprisingly, a little hazy of the events that took place 30 or more years ago. Uh, can I ask you to say whether when you wrote the book, Brother Enemy, your memory was a little clearer than it is now? Perhaps an obvious question, but can I start there? Yes, surely. Uh, I wrote the book in basically in 1985, and uh, although it was still several years after the conflict had begun, uh, I was then still covering the region and was in touch with people, so memory was much fresher. Yes, thank you. Uh, you wrote the book in 1985, and you've described in fair, fairly thorough detail in your footnotes uh, the sources that you used to, to write the book. In general terms, do you consider the, the sources that you quoted to be reliable? Les sources euh, que vous avez utilisées um, pour écrire votre livre reliable, and sometimes I would quote a source not non. necessarily because it is reliable, but because Il de it has a documentary très fiable, uh, for instance, the um, May 10th broadcast of the Khmer Rouge, exemple, uh, that the broadcast was made in itself is very important to note whether the sentiments or information given there were true or not. Yes, thank you. Perhaps a follow-up question. Did you knowingly cite any sources that you did not believe to be accurate other than those occasions you just mentioned for other reasons? No, I would not do that. Yes, thank you. 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 I'd just like to ask a little about your own Question. research methods at the time you were a journalist and an editor. Methods, uh, In the 1970s and 1980s, dans les années 70, as a rule, did you keep written notes of the interviews you conducted? Uh, were there cassette tapes de or films um, versions of your interviews? Cassette, Perhaps you could just describe your methodology for us, please. Um, the official interviews, um, I would tape and transcribe. Pour ce qui était des interviews officielles en tant que j'écoutais des bandes, je prenais des enregistrements et ensuite je les transcrivais that, uh, pour ce qui était des autres. So Quelquefois, l'enregistrement 
euh, euh, décourager un petit peu les gens. Les gens avaient peur de, de, de parler. Donc je me contentais de prendre des notes pour d'autres interviews. And just to confirm the notes that you made from which you compiled your book, would it be fair to say that those notes of the incident were at a time when the incidents were still fresh in your memory? Yes, indeed. These notes were taken. Il était prêt juste après les interviews. Réponse oui, effectivement, elle l'était, juste après les interviews. You've told us on a number of occasions that you had access to some rather influential people at the time. Personnes Perhaps if you could please explain for us how it came about that you had such privileged access to such important people. accès aussi privilégié à des personnes aussi importantes. I think, it's very difficult to know why people were willing to talk to me. Pourquoi les personnes étaient disposées à me parler? I can guess that several factors are at play. First of all, I was in the China correspondent and later on diplomatic correspondent of the Far East Economic Review, which was considered to be the Bible of the region comme étant la Bible pour la région, à savoir le, la revue la plus, qui avait le plus d'influence. Very special position Donc, ce qui me place dans une position tout à fait particulière, vis-à-vis des personnes qui think, souhaitaient transmettre um, et communiquer leurs idées ou leurs points de vue. Just Deuxièmement, pour moi, il ne s'agissait pas seulement d'un travail de uh, reportage, uh, as a scholar before I became a journalist. Avant, j'étais chercheur universitaire avant de devenir journaliste. I worked in Sorbonne for three years. J'ai étudié pendant trois ans à la Sorbonne. Which I didn't finish on Cambodia. And so my background, knowledge about the country, about the problems, perhaps gave me a little bit of an edge over others. Problems me donnait peut-être une longueur d'avance sur mes confrères. Vous avez des questions que je vous pose. And so I found people were interested in talking to me because they thought that I understood the issues and asked questions that were relevant. So that would be my guess. 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 Euh, vis -à -vis de cette question portant sur l'accès que j'avais à ces personnes. You've given examples question. of the types of people to whom you had access. Du type de personnalité. I wonder if you can perhaps expand on that uh, just a little. Accès. For example, you refer to various instances in the footnotes to your book. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far East Economic Review. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far East Economic Review. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far East Economic Review. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far East Economic Review. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far East Economic Review. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far East Economic Review. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far East Economic Review. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far East Economic Review. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far East Economic Review. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far East Economic Review. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far East Economic Review. Conversations with people who had access to the editors of the Far I think of the newspaper editors who proved invaluable source was Mr. Wang Tong. He was the editor of the Vietnamese Party Daily, Yanzhan. He was a central government member. As a result, he was privy to également il avait une fonction officielle et donc il avait un accès particulier et puisqu'il avait ce rôle il jouait ce rôle d'éditeur il était plus facile de s'adresser à lui donc je l'ai rencontré à ma entreprise and he had a great sense of humor, and he enjoyed conversation. And in the process, gave information which was very valuable. And he 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 gave information
Phnom Penh was the only place I could Phnom not Penh come during these four years. Je, I had seen Khmer Rouge diplomats outside the country. Ans, Khmer Rouge and, à um, du pays. and also I have to correct Et one thing I said earlier. I did uh, see que Mr. Yangtze Yangtzeri after he was out of power. I saw him in 1979 in Colombo. Uh, after he had been je, je uh, Colombo, removed from power in Phnom Penh. Après qu'il ait été and I saw him later on in uh, 1980s as well. Après il est, But um, il a le pouvoir et vu, rencontré également these dans government officials again were um, interested in finding out what I knew and, uh, in, and give me something more. So it was always uh, a conversation which perhaps helped both sides. Et donc, en fait, il ici d'un échange mutuellement euh, bénéfique. This might be a, a little difficult for you to answer in specific question. terms. Peut-être qu'il va vous être difficile de, de répondre à cette question euh, of your expertise. Dans les termes Could you estimate for us mais how many interviews you had conducted du nombre d'interviews regarding the hostilities between Cambodia and Vietnam over the many years that you've uh, been studying ces années, and working in the region. Interview spécifiquement portant sur le conflit entre le Cambodge et le Vietnam. It's very hard to say. I would, you know, it would certainly réponse, be très, très difficile à d'évaluer le nombre de ces interviews. In terms of de ces uh, people who are en terme, um, officials or responsables, some way of knowing information more than average person, um, I would say disposer d'une connaissance particulière des informations. I don't know. Peut-être uh, uh, yes. des douzaines, voire uh, on peut en compter des centaines. Peut-être qu'il est très difficile de, de, de like quantifier la chose. To Question. certain specific sources that you have quoted in your book to support the propositions uh, that have been put to you and that you have vous talked about in your evidence so far. Dans le cadre de votre déposition présent. The first is a source that you quote at pages 32 to 33 of your book which bears an E-R-N of, in the English, 0019-2218-00192219-2219. And that source uh, you refer in the footnotes as being Yang Seri's interview with Patrice de Beer, P-A-T-R-I-C-E-D-E-B-E-E-R, who was the Southeast Asia correspondent of the French newspaper Le Monde. And the interview took place between Monsieur de Beer and Yang Seri in October 1975. In particular, Alors plus particulièrement, at pages 32 to 33, page 32, 33 you discuss from that interview Yang Seri's explanation les de regarding Yang Seri de cette the pre-1954 French colonial maps. Les cartes de l'époque And this, I think, relates to the question of the maritime borders and the Clavier line. La question, des First of all, can you just confirm Clavier. the source for us that that indeed was a source that you used uh, to support uh, your conclusions regarding the attitude of both parties to the border in question? Yes, sir. Um, Patrice de Baer oui, is a very Patrice dear friend, and I do not um, recall whether and this was precisely the words he published in Le Monde, but he shared his notes with me, and I quote from those notes. Thank you. We haven't yet had it explained to us in full what exactly the Brevier line was. 
referred to it briefly in answer to questions from my colleague. And, and perhaps I should spell it for the for the transcript. It's B R E V I E acute. Perhaps if you could take a few moments to explain for us what the brevier line was and why it was controversial for the Cambodians at that time. Um, again, I have to um, ask for your forgiveness in my uh, somewhat vagueness of my question answering because this is again a very um, complex issue. My memory is that in 1939, this line was drawn from the land border marking Vietnam and Cambodia, extended into the sea in that angle of the border, and it was decided that north of that line, all the islands would fall under Cambodian police jurisdiction, and south would fall under Vietnamese. And since the line sort of cut across Phu Quoc Island, an exception was made by dotted line surrounding Phu Quoc, so that Phu Quoc stays on the Vietnamese side uh, for the police uh, jurisdiction. And when this issue came up between Vietnam and Cambodia in 1975, that line had acquired a different significance because there was search for oil and gas in the Gulf of Thailand. And so the question of sovereignty of the islands would affect what would be the territorial waters and why one can have exploration for gas and um, oil. And that is why the issue of who controls the north of the Brevia line or south of the Brevia line and whether that actually demarcated sovereignty became an important issue. I had uh, interviewed the Vietnamese Deputy uh, minister, Foreign Minister, Mr. Phan Hien, and I asked him about um, whether Vietnam accepted Brevia Line. And he indicated that Vietnam did, but then uh, in a caveat he said when uh, Vietnam agreed to Bravia Line, there was no such question of um, undersea resources, gas and oil. So I got the impression that the issue of Bravia Line was not closed and it, it was subject to further negotiations. And in fact, just to complete, what Yang Sari was mentioning uh, to your colleague, uh, Mr. De Beer, was that there was a Beer. problem also with the pre-1954 maps. For, for what reason? I can remind you of the page, page 32 and 33. If you could just perhaps yeah. elaborate on that a little. Yeah, this has been uh, one of the Cambodian complaints about the border demarcation because uh, South Vietnam, uh, Cochin China, was a French colony. So while drawing the border demarcation, the Cambodians complained that the, it was Vietnam, the Vietnamese side or the French colonial side was favored. So, and that is what Yang Sari is referring to, that because Cochin China was a direct French colony, the borderline was drawn, which was favoring the Vietnamese side rather than Cambodian side. Do you know the language in which Mr. De Beer spoke to Mr. Yang Sari? In French. L'interview entre ces deux personnes avait eu lieu en quelle langue Perhaps I should have asked you this at the beginning. Which of the regional languages do you personally speak, uh, Mr. Chanda? Um, 
I speak, my mother tongue is Bengali. Je parle I speak Bengali, Hindi. C'est ma langue maternelle, and Hindi. French. Et je connais aussi le français. And the interviews conducted with the regional leaders. Are you able to assist us with whether you used generally a translator or whether the leaders spoke in a mutually intelligible language? Uh, with the, uh, with Yang Sari, I spoke in French. Uh, with uh, uh, Mr. Famandong, it was through an interpreter. The Prime Minister doesn't uh, speak to foreign reporters in any other language, but uh, with other Vietnamese officials, I spoke uh, French or English. Moving on to uh, another source for a different point, the point that you've discussed already relates to uh, one point you, you have uh, discussed already. Uh, relates to the motivations for conflict on both sides. And at uh, pages 31 to 32 of your book, which appear at 00192217 to 00192218 in the English, uh, you refer in the footnotes Dans la note de to a source from Norodom Sihanouk and the memoir uh, La Calice Jusqu'à la Lie. Participant de la, de and de in the Sihanouk section de in, boire in le your book to which I've referred, Et dans le passage de votre livre, uh, Norodom Sihanouk recounts Sihanouk a story of his own trip to Hanoi with Q Sampan and uh, the refusal of Q Sampan to dine together with Lao and Vietnamese communists. Could you perhaps explain a little what that passage of your book uh, relates to? And this um, passage relates to the Cambodian sensitivity the Khmer Rouge sensitivity to the notion of special relationship. Um, this has been actually the most important issue between the Khmer Rouge and the Vietnamese party. Vietnamese um, dominated Indochinese Communist Party uh, was formed to fight for liberation of French Indochina, including Cambodia and Laos, and the Indochinese Communist Party had members from Laos and Cambodia, though very few, but they were members. And uh, when the Indochinese Communist Party was disbanded in order to have national parties set up, in 1951, Khmer People's Revolutionary Party, KPRP, was founded in 1951, and Lao People's Party was founded at the same time. But this was just for the show. The Vietnamese maintained uh, good relations, close relationship with these two parties and believed that these three parties should work together because not only Indochina was one political unit under the French, but geographically, strategically, it made sense for them to work together uh, in order to protect their sovereignty and their social system. And the Khmer Rouge were, um, that was the big departure from the previous Cambodian party policy. When Pol Pot took over the party, first as deputy secretary in 1960, and then in 63 as secretary of the party. And that was when also he decided that the birthday of the party should be changed to 1960 rather than 1951. And that action was again this, uh, with the purpose of severing connection with the Vietnamese, that Cambodian party was something original, founded by the Khmer, had nothing to do with the Vietnamese. 
était quelque so, chose d'original et n'avait rien à voir avec le Vietnam. Bah, le Vietnam que le refus de Chiang Kai-shek avait une manière de montrer qu'il refuse de souscrire quoi que ce soit qui Mr. pourrait être un témoignage d'une euh, d'un parti indochinois. Monsieur le Président, est-ce que ce ne serait pas maintenant un moment idoine the President, uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Prosecutor. The trial chamber now takes an adjournment and resume at uh, 3.15 p.m. The court official is now instructed uh, to make sure that uh, the expert is taken to a waiting room and take a good rest.